This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. You guys are throwing up the pictures about they were in the bathroom or they were on the stage. As somebody who's been to Mar-a-Lago, <laughs> you just can't walk through Mar-a-Lago of your own accord because Secret Service is all over the place. So if the documents are in a place, they're in a room, Depending on the time of year, you can't even get into said room. There are 33 bathrooms at, at Mar-a-Lago. So don't act like it's just in some random bathroom that the guests can go into. That's not true. That is true. And uh, Byron Donald, I, he's from Florida. I, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what he was given or what he needs from uh, Donald Trump. I, I don't know why he would say such a stupid thing like the Secret Service are tasked with guarding Donald Trump's boxes in his bathrooms. Listen, I got news for you. The Secret Service isn't there to guard bathrooms. The Secret Service isn't there to guard boxes. The Secret Service isn't there to guard weddings. They're not Donald Trump's, uh, you know, a, a security detail for, uh, you know, occasions for uh, the people that come into. They are there to make sure nobody assassinates Donald Trump, period, end of story. That is the entirety of their mission, of their goal, okay? And uh, might I remind you, might I remind you that in the indictment, uh, even though, you know, uh, we knew this because it was in the newspapers as it was happening, 20 Secret Service agents who were detailed to Donald Trump over the past, uh, you know, few years were all interviewed by uh, Jack Smith in front of the grand jury. And they were all asked whether or not they were aware that there were boxes that needed, uh, you know, protection that had classified material or that were uh, responsive to a federal grand jury subpoena. And they all said, no, we had no idea there were boxes. We had no clue, okay? Uh, and, and, and obviously, the Secret Service isn't there to protect bathrooms and boxes in the first place. But let me just read from the indictment, okay? This is just one little paragraph. It's real quick. It says, the United States Secret Service provided protection services to Trump and his family after he left office, including at the Mar-a-Lago Club. But it was not responsible for the protection of Trump's boxes or their contents. Trump did not informed the Secret Service that he was storing boxes containing classified documents at the Mar-a-Lago Club. Now, either a sitting member of the United States Congress from Florida, Byron Donalds, didn't bother to read this or didn't understand what he was reading and didn't understand the news he was reading, which seems to be an epidemic in the Republican Party, or he's lying. You choose, because we're down to those two choices. Either he has no earthly idea what's been written in newspapers or that the Secret Service were called down to the grand jury and that almost two dozen Secret Service detail agents testified that they had no idea that he was storing classified information or boxes of any sort in bathrooms on stage. They had no earthly idea. And he's still willing to sit on the TV and go, you know, there's no big deal that they were in a bathroom because the Secret Service protects those bathrooms. What? Are you out of your freaking mind? Or he's lying. I don't know which it is. Actually, I don't actually care anymore. But it's time for people to actually say, oh, my God, this is bad. This is inexcusable, and I cannot defend the indefensible. As an American patriot, I can't defend this, defen this indefensible behavior by this man who held himself out as an America first president who cared about this country in any way, shape or form. Obviously, he only cared about himself. And you know, here's the other interesting thing. I, I just wanna say this before I forget to tell it to you. You know why this stuff I believe, and I, again, I have no information, it might come out at trial, I don't know. Uh, but the information that Donald Trump was showing people had to do with attack plans for Iran. You know who hates Iran more than you do, <laughs> do you? It would be Saudi Arabia. Well, why does Saudi Arabia and Iran have issues? Well, because Saudi Arabia is Sunni Islam and Iran is Shia Islam. 
and they are natural born enemies. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand, you know, like why that it's very tribal, but it's real. It's really real. I, I had a landlord once who his daughter was uh, Sunni and she was engaged to a Shia. And I swear to God, they refer to it as a mixed marriage and they were not happy. Their daughter was engaging in a mixed marriage. Listen, I don't know. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's sort of like Pat Robertson had disdain for Protestants. He thought Protestants were the spawn of Satan. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's so granular. It's so in the weeds. But Saudi Arabia seems to have benefited greatly from Donald Trump's presidency. And uh, it seems like the Trump family also got a transactional uh, benefit because Jared got $2 billion and Donald Trump got the Live Golf Tournament to play at his golf clubs where the PGA would not. You see, and now we have to have an investigation into the Saudi purchase of the PGA, a great American, uh, you know, sports, uh, sporting uh, thing. I mean, it's, uh, God, the amount of, of, of crud that this man has rained upon this country on every front. I mean, America first. Oh, let's sell the all-American PGA golf tournament to the Saudis. What? Yeah, because PGA won't play at my golf club. So, you know, I'm going to help them with, uh, you know, showing them about how to attack Iran. I'm going to show them how we would. Maybe they'll do it, you know. I, I, I don't even know what the hell that was about, except to tell you that there is a natural hatred for, of Saudi Arabia, of Iran, and Iran hates Saudi Arabia. So why are all these documents that he's showing to people who aren't authorized to see it having to do with Iran and attack plans for Iran? I don't know. I don't know, but I just meant to tell you that, and also that the Secret Service doesn't defend or protect bathrooms or boxes. Leon on Long Island. Randy, yeah. I hope that you are going to clear up a mystery for me. It's a legitimate question. Now, we know that um, he took those boxes. He took those files. I know where you're going. It. I know where you're going. Yeah, it's on tape. Okay, well, let me cut right No, go it. ahead. Yeah. How is he be, if he's being taped, how does that happen? And why doesn't he stop himself if he knows he's being taped? So that, that, that's what I don't understand. How do we have this information? Who's taping it? The aid? Is there some kind of a, a, a tape machine going? How are we getting this information? Which information? Oh, I okay. thought I thought you were going to ask me why there. See, it's my question I thought was your question. I, I'm sorry. But, oh, 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 no, because okay. here's my question. Here's the one unanswered question I still have after reading all this stuff and you know uh, finding out uh, that there is a backup plan for Bedminster and maybe filing in New Jersey. My question is why hasn't there been a search warrant for Bedminster for that golf uh, club? How come they haven't searched that place? That's my question. Sure. So your question about the, the tape recordings is his own lawyer was taping him. Uh, no, no, but, okay, now this is what confuses me. Okay, because he's saying, look at this, look at this. I'm not supposed to have this, look at this. Anyway. Okay, oh, so and, in that conversation, that one, that one that you're talking about, that was between a publisher and a writer who were ghostwriting uh -huh. um, uh, Mark Meadows, uh, you know, I think his book is called... Uh, uh, chief to the chief or something. I don't know, some stupid thing. Anyway, when when journalists or, or writers uh, or publishers actually uh, interview you for a book, there, there's always a tape recorder in plain sight on the table or on the phone, and they will always tell you that you are being recorded. So that's, that's okay, just I, standard right. practice. Okay, you've cleared that up, and I understand that now. But with the presence of this tape recorder that he knows is there, is he really that stupid to say things that would incriminate him yes he did it last night too last night he confessed he really to a crime last night he stood on a freaking stage in that same place bedminster where he incriminated himself he admitted that he did what is in the indictment he admitted that he did it his theory is he was entitled to do it which just is not supported by the law but that's his. That's what he's doing. That's what he's, you know, spewing because he wants people to believe something other than the truth. Shocker. But yes, he is that stupid. That's why I keep I'm saying, you know, keep talking, done. Donnie. Keep talking. Now, 
I'm Listen, genuinely stunned. But I do have a question about the search warrant of Bedminster. I, I mean, maybe it did happen on the sl- I don't know how you would keep something like that quiet. I, I honestly don't. But obviously he's bringing the documents to Bedminster. And obviously in New Jersey, at that place, he is being recorded, showing it to people unauthorized to see it, and no search warrant. So those recordings were made with his consent, and yes, the answer to your question is, he is that stupid! Clear for What's your Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.